And with us right now, Elizabeth Bowman. Elizabeth, you're the VP of Client Strategy with December Labs. You're found on the web at decemberlabs.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Josh. So Elizabeth, you're currently in Argentina, is that right? Uh, close by in uh, Uruguay and uh, it's cap yeah it's capital Montevideo but it's right it's a small country right tucked in between Argentina and Brazil sure but you're pretty well traveled uh you were just telling me a U.S. based company but you're originally from Germany right right yeah no I I, I don't even know how many countries I've I've lived in just uh, yeah the last few decades um but yeah originally from Germany born on a small island in the North Sea um I lived in California for some time um led a digital agency based out of Miami uh and yes and December Labs offices are uh, in Houston Texas and then our near shore offices here in South America and right now with the worldwide pandemic happening it's actually not the worst place to be <laughs> So for someone trying to listen to Elizabeth's, uh, you know, again, not, you know, Americans just <laughs> say, trying to place your accent. And I'm like, mm, I can't I place know. it. <laughs> it happens. It's, it happens. It's, it, the the <laughs> accent is uh, we'll just call it of the world. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. No, and and it's funny because the same thing happens in Spanish because I kind of speak what you would call Rio Platense, which is the Spanish from down here. Mm -hmm. So when I'm in the U.S. and you know and you have just a lot of people from the Dominican Republic, Mexico, and everything, like they just can't figure it out at all. It's like you know, uh, it's really weird, but uh, sure. but it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> I also so speak Dutch and a couple of other things. Oh my gosh! So <laughs> December, how many languages do you speak? Uh, I think about five. <laughs> wow. All right. So um, yeah. I'm going to ask you this. The, the rest of the inter interview will be in English. Um, but All right. <laughs> December Labs, um, in, in, your, in your best English, uh, describe from a high level what December Labs does. Sure. Um, at December Labs, we are a team of a little over 80 um, designers, engineers, really, really great people and professionals um, who specialize in, um, in developing mobile and web applications, a lot of custom software. Um, we work a lot with startups, with growth stage, but also enterprise company from Google to Accenture and really help people build amazing products and their businesses, really, when you yeah. think about it. And you've you've worked with some companies that have um, actually gotten, uh, we yep. you know listeners may be <laughs> familiar with them. Um, would you mind maybe share, sharing some of the work that you've done? Uh, sure. Uh, for example, Brain FM, um, you know, within kind of the the health and wellness space, is one of the uh, better known ones. Um, then again, with Google and Accenture, as I mentioned, but also a lot in the financial industry. Um, anything from the IDB, um, which is the Inter American Development Bank, um, based out of Washington D.C., for example. Um, yeah, and then also, as I said, a lot of really amazing startups that I hope you'll be hearing more about in the near mm -hmm. future. <laughs> yeah. Um, so who is, uh, who's kind of a, an ideal client for you at this point? Uh, that's a great question, actually. And I think roughly I could divide it into three groups. Um, so the first one would be, um, you know, a company can be a startup, but can also be an established company, um, which is trying to build a tech product and, you know, really needs us to do it from finish to start the entire product cycle. Um, the second group, I would say, is um, a really technical company that needs additional support, scale, uh, you know, scale up their team, um, just some really extra muscle in building whatever they're trying to build. Yeah. And then the third one, which is kind of interesting, is, um, you know, big companies or like typically they're, they're bigger size enterprise companies um, that need help with UX research and uh, UX design. And that's kind of interesting because they might have internal teams that build, you know, design and build their products, but they might need expertise from the outside to really, um, you know, validate if what they're building is the right thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, those have been uh, actually really interesting projects there that we've been doing in the past. How do, I mean, what are the fundamentals of mm -hmm. designing a good user experience? Like, how do you know? Like, um, is That's it a just really tough like, one. Well, currently, <laughs> um, you know, we, we don't do um, skeuomorphic uh, buttons, uh, you know, we do flat, you know, so, oh, wow, Josh, uh, way to, way to be on top of things there. Um, but, you know, how do you know, like, where do you start when yeah. you say, okay, here's ultimately what we want to provide or give the user access to or, or provide for the user, then how do you lay all that out? Because it feels to me, it's always just kind of like guessing. 
No, it's, I think you really put like the most fundamental question of building any products, but especially tech products here, just right up in the open. And uh, if you look at, you know, statistics uh, that say that about 90% of startups actually fail, um, it is really a tough question uh, because most companies, um, even though they might have great ideas, they are not figuring it out. And there's many reasons why. So for us, one of the challenges really that we face every day, and I particularly when I, um, you know, strategize with um, with companies, with people that want to build something, is uh, really putting the user at the core of everything. Like, who are you trying to build this for? And that's also where I think my background in marketing, um, I, uh, you know, used to work in digital marketing before kind of pivoting into tech. Um, and, you know, in marketing, you really have to have the consumer at the forefront of everything that you're doing. Um, because if you're not doing that for someone specific, then, you know, it's not going to work. And that's really what I also apply in tech. Um, because if you don't solve a specific user problem with whatever you're trying to build with an app, with a website, you know, with whatever kind of tech product you might have, then it is probably going to fail. Um, so the nice thing is that today there are many different tools. There are uh, methodologies that can help you, um, which uh, one of them uh, is uh, UX research. Um, UX stands for user experience. And, um, you know, uh, uh, it's really at its core um, validating whatever kind of idea or product you're trying to build with users before actually building it. You know, really make sure that your idea is, you know, that you are really onto something. Yeah. Uh, and I wonder, what, my, I guess my next question would be, what do those labs look like? I mean, how do you, what's the best way of gathering that data without, because mm -hmm. I think what you, you know, I don't know. I mean, you don't want to build the <laughs> whole entire thing and, and invest, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in designing it a certain way. And everyone's like, this is terrible. It'd be nice you to know not. that earlier <laughs> in the process. So yeah. are, I would imagine, so there are, what you kind of mock things up or how, how would that work? No, you, you should definitely not spend thousands or, or even a lot more, um, you know, dollars um, before actually validating that. But many people do. Um, so uh, and, and, and that's also what I talk a lot about with startups, because oftentimes they come to me and say, hey, Liz, you know, I heard about UX research, for example. But, you know, I, I, I think that's only for enterprise companies. So it's only for, you know, really big companies. But can I afford that as a startup? Is that something that I can do? And the answer is yes. Um, really, the beautiful thing about UX is that there are many different options of leveraging just very specific um, tactics that don't have to be neither lengthy nor expensive and that are actually affordable for everyone. And the way that this works is that, um, you know, depending on the project and on the possibilities, you know, do you already have existing users? Do you not have existing users? Or do you have maybe, you know, just kind of a base that you can work off of, um, you know, see what kind of instances make sense? Does it make sense, for example, to send out a survey to gather preliminary information? Um, are there analytics available from a previous product that you built? Um, or can we actually conduct remote, um, you know, uh, moderated interviews? And especially now with the pandemic, I mean, you know, before we sometimes used to do these kind of interviews in person, but today we have really great tools at our disposition that allow us to do that remotely. Um, so that, you know, although you might be far away as you know, we can't just travel um, as we want across the country, we can still talk to those users and, for example, have them use a, a prototype, you know, an initial design, uh, which can be at different stages and observe them how they use it, what kind of pain points they might have, um, what kind of problems, what kind of, you know, what kind of thought process they're really going through while using something. And you can go a lot more specific in this, um, as again, that's kind of the beauty of UX that it really provides you with just that one specific, um, you know, methodology for each problem. For example, if you say, hey, I really want to see if the sitemap of my website, you know, like where I have each menu part, like, does that really intuitive? There are specific things, um, you know, that you can test there, but sometimes yeah. it's just a lot rougher. Like, am I really building the right product? Am I solving a problem here? Yeah. Um, so when someone approaches December Labs, um, what's the, I mean, generally from, I, I'm just curious, um, what's the <laughs> range on the investment for the mm -hmm. scope of work that you usually work with? 
Um, that is another good question, be and especially because it can be really broad. Um, you know, like sometimes um, we only work on you know the initial kind of UX UI design phase, um, and we try and build a clickable prototype that then, for mm -hmm. example, a small stage startup can go with to investors and actually show them what the product will look like once it's developed. It's not functional yet, but these kind of prototypes you might be able to build with, let's say, 15 to 20k. And you have something, you know, feasible that actually looks like what you are going to build in the future. Then, of course, when you're um, looking into building an actual product, actually mobile apps, of course, it depends a lot on the technologies. If you're doing it for iOS and Android, for example, when it comes to mobile um, or on the website also, you know, are you building an e-commerce? Um, is this something, you know, um, just user facing or also has an administrative le uh, level to it? All of those things um, can really, yeah, make your uh, budget vary um, from the tens of thousands to, of course, you know, I mean, the sky's the limit. Um, if right. you really want to build something long term, um, then it's probably going to be an ongoing investment. How does December Labs um, kind of what, what, what would you say would be the USP for December Labs? So someone's like, well, you know, I was looking at just hiring somebody on Upwork or something like that. Uh, what would you say to them in terms of like, well, we might be a really good fit for you if X and kind of what, what that is. That's actually a really difficult question because uh, when it comes to design and development, I mean, really, uh, there are companies worldwide. And, um, you know, depending on what you're looking for and what your preferences might be, um, all kinds of different options might be valid. Some people are very, very budget sensitive and just, you know, really want to spend the minimum amount and they might find a company in Asia that fits their needs. They might not um communicate as good or there might be other kinds of issues but maybe you know that might be the right fit of what you're looking for for us um i would say we have really a sweet spot when it comes to combining um a us level of experience having our um, offices in houston texas combined um with a nearshore team in south america that is really really senior and that um, we can offer for really competitive pricing when it comes to you know us rates um, but besides that, I mean, personally, for me, really the essence of what we do is empathize with who we're working with and really trying to understand the business. It's, you know, many companies can just build, you know, your product, you know, hey, I'm going to, you know, spend a few hours on designing, on developing them. And, um, and it's sometimes not that easy to distinguish yourself there from other companies. But for me, when I, you know, really strategize with someone. It's really about what, what are you trying to build? Is this the right thing that you're going to build? Should we do this another way? Are there any experiences that we have had in our many years of building really uh, many, many different products and many different verticals that we can leverage here that can make it easier for you, you know, as far as the learning curve? Um, so, I mean, again, I know that we're not the fit for everyone as it happens with everyone, but uh, I think really, yeah, having, having, enthusiasm and empathy at the core of what you do is something that you notice, um, I hope, uh, yeah. intuitively. I mean, a customer really, I mean, you know, if, if I'm working with a consultant and I could tell they really care about mm -hmm. my outcome, like, I love that. That's what I want. I want to be surrounded I know, by people me too. care. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so before I ask you to perform something for us, now I've Oh just, my gosh. <laughs> Because <laughs> I see if you're watching the video version of my conversation with Elizabeth, um, you'll see that she's surrounded by, I see violins, I see guitars, I see, I don't know, it looks like a oh, keyboard of some sort. Yeah. What else do yeah. you have there? Um, yeah, the ukulele as well, two guitars, a keyboard, an omnicord, um, which is a, kind of an Asian uh, keyboard instrument. Um, so yeah, I, I think I play a little over 10 instruments. <laughs> oh my gosh. Five languages. 10 instruments, uh, it, you're, it's, a, a December lab must love you. Yeah. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, I think it's mutual. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I'm curious from your position, um, you know, in working in UX and just kind of living it, um, what predictions do you have for the future of user experiences? I think overall users will only get more sophisticated and more demanding. Um, if you look at you know how how the World Wide Web looked like in the nineties, it looked really terrible. But that <laughs> uh, but, well, now for I the mean, time, it was amazing. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. But I mean, it's all, it also has to do with people at that time not being that sophisticated as far oh. as, you know, using the World Wide Web. And then, you know, mobile just really grew uh, in the 2000s. Um, so today, uh, really, we are so used to having such a great or such a broad array of different, you know, tools and apps and sites, you know, at our disposition. And it actually makes it hard for startups because for example, if you are building a mobile app, people will have it on your, uh, on their phones uh, right next to an enterprise app that, you know, someone like Apple might have spent, uh, you know, really millions of dollars on, and you might have a really, really strong, a small budget, but that's what the user compares you to. So overall, that's also why, you know, I'm so, so strong always on UX research, because that really helps you from the very beginning, at least, you know, um, jump through some of those loopholes, make, make sure that, you, yeah, you just avoid on really not being on the right track here, because it gets, it gets expensive if you're really building something big here. And again, um, people are just always going to get more demanding and sophisticated. Uh, so of all of the, uh, of all the apps, what would be, what would be a good app or two that, that, some, that I could like, I'm in the app store right now, uh, brain FM, like who, who, which U UX that maybe you know that you've been involved in lately, mm -hmm. like we're pretty proud of this one. I would definitely say that one app that I particularly like very much is, um, Biostrap. Biostrap uh, kind of is within the Fitbit realm, mm -hmm. uh, and it's an app that is focused on um, biometric tracking, uh, and it's really for a prosumer. You know, if you're an athlete and you really just want to get a little bit more uh, data than just, you know, from the regular kind of fitness tracker, I think what's really special about that app is just it really provides users or these prosumers with a lot of data, a lot of data. And it's really hard to make that just, you know, like to, to really present that to users in an easy way to digest. Yeah. Um, so this is really an app that we have been working on um, with our client for many years throughout many, many iterations. And especially now, even with the pandemic, um, these kind of companies have just gotten so much more relevant because, you know, you see, you read about it every day in the news that Fitbit tra that fitness trackers um, can now be used um, partly for early detection of COVID because they read your biometrics and they can give you indications on how your health is doing. So these kind of things are just, um, yeah, really what I am most excited about when I think about the work that we've been specifically doing in the health space, yeah. um, including, you know, fitness, well-being, wellness. Um, yeah, because it just really helps people understand their body better, um, but also live healthier lives. All right, Elizabeth, uh, what, can you play anything on the ukulele for us? <laughs> Would you be willing to? You don't have to. I'm putting you so on the spot. You are really putting me on the spot here. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to. You can even well, just do a quick instrumental, it'll be fine. You don't have to sing. Well, I might get the guitar. A guitar. Okay, great. <laughs> um, let me think what this could be. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a I've heard of once in a lullaby. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for that. I got to say in getting on 600 episodes now, that is our very, very first musical performance. <laughs> I can't believe you made me do that. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for being good sport. You're a good sport. Okay. So decemberlabs.com. Um, someone is, um, they've really appreciated, they certainly appreciated your music. Um, <laughs> and um, where would, what would you have, what should they look at? What should they click on? What should they, um, where, where would you recommend they, they get started? Sure. Uh, on the one hand, I am really big about what we call democratizing knowledge, and which is really getting information out there so that startups and also tech companies in general can get informed about different things. For example, app ownership, you know, uh, kind of almost, you know, boring sounding items such as uh, IP ownership and so, but that are really important uh, when you're choosing a development company. But also, uh, you know, talk going back to UX and everything, you know, what are the different kind of positions? There are UX design 
designers, UX researchers, UI designers, we are just um, starting to get a lot of information out there that I think can just be very educative and that can help people before even, you know, reaching out before actually making that first step. Mm. Um, that on the one hand, and the other thing that I would really recommend is uh, in our work section uh, mm -hmm. at decemberlabs.com um, slash work. Yeah. Um, in our case studies, what we always try to do is give you a glimpse of really the way that we work. And there are really great um, examples of the, that entire product cycle. You know, really from the start, you have Brain FM there, but also many other, um, you know, projects, uh, including even computer vision that are just, you know, really nice to look at, but also that really show you how a product can evolve from that really initial idea to the final end product. I love it. All right. Elizabeth Bullman, you're the VP of Client Strategy with December Labs, the website again, decemberlabs.com. Elizabeth, thank you so yep. much. And again, thank you for that beautiful, beautiful song <laughs> as well. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure.